back today with my stack at TBR for my favourite month in the entire year, October! Yay! As you guys will probably already have seen, I have posted a TBR for the first two weeks of October because I will be taking part in the very exciting Books in the Freezer readathon. If you'd like more information about that, I will link my TBR and the announcement post below. So I'm not going to give you a synopsis for those books, but I am going to quickly tell you what I'm going to be reading. I Call Upon Thee by Anya Alborn, which is a possession slash haunting novella. Doorbells at Dust, this is a Halloween stories anthology. There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins, which is a YA horror slash suspense slash thriller novel. The, of course, much talked about and much loved Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin. And then I'm going to finish off with either The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay or with my best friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. So I am only going to be reading spooky books for the first two weeks because possibly Helen will divorce me if I need an escort to go for a pee in the middle of the night for any more than the first two weeks of the month. You think I'm joking? I'm not. I love spooky books, but they don't always love me. Oh, and as always, you will find the rules of Stack It in the description, but basically it's where I make a stack of books, then read them in order without skipping them. And if I come to one I don't like, I DNF and unhaul it. It's a great way to bust all of that TBR indecision that you have and to get you out of reading slumps. It's this many, many books long, so let's just get started, shall we? The first book that I'm going to pick up is a non-fiction book and it is entirely about young women with mental health issues. It is That Was When People Started to Worry by Nancy Tucker. Now you guys probably recognise Nancy Tucker's name from my videos in the past because I have loved and absolutely raved about the time in between, which is her memoir about her recovery from bulimia and anorexia. It is written from a place of I am in recovery and have not yet recovered and I want to share my journey with you and it is so individual and so moving. It's possibly the most moving piece of memoir I have ever read ever and if you're at all interested in the subject then I beg you to pick it up. So when I found out that Icon Books were publishing this one I absolutely begged them for a review copy and they kindly sent this one along. This is an interesting non-fiction one in that it is told entirely in interviews. Nancy calls it a look into unwell minds and she wants to give voice to young women who are making that transition in their life into becoming adults and the journeys that they face when dealing with mental illness that is not necessarily always recognised or supported. So I'm very much looking forward to getting my teeth into this one. You guys know how passionate I am about advocating that we all talk about our mental health issues and that we are open about them and that is what this book is about. The next one that I have here is one that I have to hold oddly to show you guys because it has a spoiler printed directly on the cover. Thank you so much publishers. And it is of course In Bloom by CJ Scuse which is the follow up to Sweet Pea which is possibly my most loved thriller ever. It is very definitely very close to the top of my top books of 2018. I cannot praise it highly enough. I will link up here the video in which I talk about it at some length. But I'm going to be picking up the sequel which I also can't tell you anything about because it would all be spoilers except to say that I'm really freaking excited and I need it right now. The next one that I'm going to be picking up is one that I am also extremely excited about because it is the third book in the series which I have newly become absolutely obsessed with and this is The Hollow Boy by Jonathan Stroud which is the third book in the Lockwood & Co series. This series is a YA horror slash urban fantasy series entirely about ghost hunting teens and it's freaking amazing. I obviously can't tell you much about this one but I can tell you about The Screaming Staircase which is book one. In this series we meet Lucy Carlyle who is a sensitive, she is a young girl who is able to hear ghosts and she goes to London 
in search of a new job after something very horrible has happened and she ends up interviewing and getting a job at Lockwood & Co which is the smallest agency in London which hunts ghosts. London is in the grip of a 50 year problem wherein ghosts have suddenly started to return and haunt slash kill and maim the living but adults are not sensitive enough to be able to see the ghosts and so adults run agencies in which children from a very young age up to sort of 18-ish are doing the ghost hunting. Except Lockwood & Co is entirely run by Anthony Lockwood who is himself a teen and there are no adults involved. These books are actually strangely scary for being a YA series. I have to admit that I have left the light on a few times and I've had to pause reading a few scenes because they have creeped me out. So I am extremely excited to be picking up book three because it's been a while since I've picked up a series which has been completed. There's only five books and have just hammered through them one after another. I'm going to go through withdrawal when I finish them aren't I? And now for the next three books on my stack at TBR for September because October does not just mean spooky books here in the house of Leanne. October also means Pratchett. Terry Pratchett's Discworld novels are a staple of my October reading and so I have decided that I am going to treat myself to the first book in three of his sequences. The first book that I'm going to be reading is of course Equal Rights and it is the first witch's book. As an amusing aside, when Helen and I met we both discovered that we were massive fans of Terry Pratchett and when we moved in together our Pratchett collections merged and we kept the less battered versions from each of those collections and this is the least battered version of Equal Rights out of our collection which just goes to show how battered the other one was. So in this one a dying wizard tries to pass on his magical staff to the eighth son of an eighth son but they discover kind of too late to do anything about it that that eighth son is actually a daughter. One of the local witches, <coughs> not saying which, you're going to have to read it, decides that they are going to bring up this wizard slash witch as a perfectly normal witch and mend the magical damage that the wizard has done, except it doesn't entirely go well. The next one that I have is of course the first in the City Watch novels and that is Guards Guards. So in this one, a very inconvenient and very large dragon has appeared in the middle of Ankhmore Pork. And quite a lot of people would just like this dragon to sod off again, thank you very much, to wherever it came from because it's burning a lot of things down. But unfortunately, as with everything in Ankhmore Pork, it's not that simple and that is not to be because the Wizards of the Unseen University quickly discover that they are missing a dragon summoning book from the depths of their library which just does not happen and they summon the wonderful Captain Vimes to try and help them locate this book. Also this gorgeous set of watch novels that I have were purchased because my other ones fell apart because I read them too much. And the third and final Pratchett that I'm going to be reading this October is the first in a sequence that I have not actually read in its entirety and that is the Tiffany Aching series which begins with the wee free men. This novel has many things happening in it but chief amongst them is that there is trouble on the Aching farm and Tiffany's little brother has been stolen away so armed with a weapon a frying pan and a magical book of her granny's spells otherwise known as diseases of sheep. Tiffany has decided that she is going to get him back. Then she gets some unconventional and unexpected assistance from some picked seas who have been chucked out of fairyland for being drunk and disorderly. Also I love the first line of this one which is some things start before other things. I love Terry Pratchett. 
The next book on my stack is a non-fiction true crime that I've been putting off for a lot of reasons and those will become apparent as soon as I tell you what it is because this is The Sleep of Reason which is a book about the James Bulger case. David James Smith's book is said to be the most comprehensive look at the James Bulger case and because it's been in the news fairly regularly recently it popped into my mind again and I decided now is finally the time to pick it up. So in 1993 James Bulger who was a two-year-old kid wandered very briefly in a split second away from his mum in a shop and was then led away and out of the shopping centre by two 10-year-old boys who then proceeded to sexually molest, torture and kill him in a really awful awful way. This case is one of those cases that almost everybody knows about because it's so unique given that the two perpetrators were so young but very recently one of those perpetrators has been in the news because for the third time after being released and given anonymity and a new start he has re-offended and so I have seen a lot of James Bilger's parents in the news recently both of his parents have published books about this case I have his father's one I've yet to pick up his mother's one and so yeah I'm gonna finally read this however harrowing it may be. The next book that I'm picking up in October is also a true crime book but it is also a memoir and also a poetry collection and that is Jane by Maggie Nelson. This tells the story of Maggie Nelson who is a fairly famous memoirist and Jane who was the third in a series of women killed by one particular offender. I heard about this collection on the lovely Sophie from Portal in the Pages channel when she recently read and loved it. I have Maggie's other book about this case, The Red Parts, on my shelf and The Red Parts tells the story later on of the family years and years later being contacted by police to be told that the perpetrator had finally been caught and was going to trial and that novel covers the trial. This one takes place way before that, was published before that, before Maggie had that closure and is very much her working through her grief at knowing that she was maybe never going to know what really happened to her aunt. And finally, as if that wasn't enough for October, at the end of the month as a reward for getting through all of those books and some pretty challenging non-fiction true crimes, I am going to be rewarding myself with the fourth Lockwood book, which is The Creeping Shadow. I temporarily forgot the name because I was distracted by how freaking huge this is. I am so happy that these books just get chunkier and chunkier as the series goes on. Just give all of the creepy, horror-y funniness to me right now. Ugh. So, these are all of the books that I am planning on reading in October, plus the books for the books in the freezer readathon. I am going to have a very, very busy spooky October month. As always, if you guys have read any of these books or if you're planning on picking any of them up, then please tell me about them in the comments and we can chat there. And until next time, I will speak to you soon. Bye! Oh, please don't fall, please. Oh God. This always looks like a great idea until you pick the stack up.